Okay, you should be set. Okay, I'll call this meeting of the Arches Hotspot Region Coordinating Committee to order at 2.04 p.m. Uh, and I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the May 13th, 2020 regular meeting. Do I have a motion? Uh, I'm, I'm so moved to approve the minutes from May 13th. Second. Second by committee member Clapper. Any discussion? Yeah, I, I want to point out I did, I go through control F is a wonderful thing, search for Duncan and uh, look up and see what was recorded for what I said. And, and typically I see in this particular minutes, it was a little weird, a couple of places. I don't think I said exactly that, but rather than take up our time to correct it now, I'm just going to let it go. But uh, it's on my onus really to correct these things before we get to the meeting. So my apologies for that. Well, that's okay. If you have an, you know, substitute motion or amendment to the motion, we can do that. Or if you're fine with it, we can just uh, adopt the minutes. Let's just go ahead and adopt them. I'll do it better next time earlier. All right. No problem. Any more discussion on the minutes? Seeing none. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Minutes adopted unanimously. Uh, citizens to be heard. Do we have any citizens to be heard? We did have the comments that were submitted uh, and circulated within the last 30, 45 minutes from Carly. So I want to acknowledge those. Um, do we have any additional citizens to be heard? Curtis, I think I believe we do it differently than the county does. We just take written comments um, compared to oh. you guys who phone in. So, okay, Carly uh, kind of signaled that she may have a comment or something. Maybe not. Um, give her a minute. Carly, did you have anything? Sorry. UDOT is having trouble joining the meeting, so I'm going to try to get them on there. Are you asking about public comment? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I sent you an email. We got, we received four public comments uh, since your last meeting, so I think they're pretty self-explanatory, but glad right. to see comments coming in. Yeah, it's good, and we did acknowledge those. Okay, moving on to item number four, committee member reports. Um, is there any committee members that would like to give a a brief report before we move on. Not seeing any, oh, go ahead, Wes, you're muted. There we go. Uh, I just wanted everybody to know we, I sat down uh, with the Downtown Business Alliance, kind of went over a few things. Um, Karen, Karen Guzman Newton was, was, was there, um, Curtis was there. We just kind of had a little gathering and talked about different ideas for downtown. Um, we actually came up with a, a pamphlet, uh, some kind of information that will be available for our workshop coming up on Friday. So I just wanted everybody to be aware of that. Great, appreciate that. Uh, Council member Duncan. Yeah, uh, so, uh... I just wanted to, I told you guys in an email letter that uh, at this meeting, I was hoping to uh, ask Monty, uh, UDOT director, uh, an important question so far as the potential future of North and South Recreation Parking, and that is would UDOT consider um, funding a couple of years of operational expenses? I have no idea, but it certainly strengthens the case for pursuing those uh, projects. So if they haven't showed up today, which disappoints me, uh, I'm not blaming them or anything. Uh, anybody have any idea if they will actually show up? Do we need to invite them explicitly or what? So we just entered the waiting room, so I will let them in in just a second. Okay, yeah. excellent. Thank you. We had a problem with the, um, for some reason, the link wasn't working for UDOT, so I had to send a separate thing. So they've been trying to get on this whole time. Okay, um, I sent out a, uh, just a, a report, not really specific to this meeting, but just 
um, to kind of encompass the work and the discussions uh, from the beginning to date. And I did get some feedback from some of you. So hopefully that uh, uh, is helpful for everyone um, and an attempt to kind of read from the same sheet of music as we move forward. Um, and uh, if we don't have any additional reports to share, um, we will move on to item five, which is the bulk of the meeting uh, discussion to further define and evaluate Main Street improvements. Um, so why don't why don't we do that? We'll move on to item five as a frame of reference um, to the committee for you know what we're going to be working off of for this item. I just recirculated the feedback document from UDOT regarding the Main Street improvements. Did everyone get an opportunity to review that? That's that was included in our. May 13th meeting, but that's, um, you know, essentially what we're working on today. And, um, you know, so as a reminder, we have the four projects, Main Street improvements is separate from our off Main Street parking and, and uh, kind of urban design redevelopment. So um, the, the document that, why don't I share that actually? Um, This is the this is the document that I'm referring to that was provided to us from UDOT as kind of initial feedback on the Main Street improvements. Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay. So uh, essentially, the way the Main Street improvements project needs to come together, if it's going to come together, you know, as as requested by UDOT is. Of these uh, intersection and mid-block bulb outs, center median, eliminate left turns downtown, mid-block crossings for pedestrians, expanding sidewalk on the west side of the highway. And so the way we got to work through this is um, for UDOT to kind of run their modeling and their analysis and, and, and give us some feedback on, on what may work and what may not work, we have to propose a combination of these components um, that will uh, complete a proposal and that proposal will be analyzed. So an example of that is if we wanted to propose Main Street bike route, bike route with uh, intersection bulb outs and a center median, they would take those three things and they would, they would uh, uh, run their modeling on that proposal and then give us some feedback as far as the feasibility of that, uh, you know, and, and the impact on uh, congestion and reduction. And so uh, a good, a good, you know, perhaps we send them, uh, leave the meeting today. I think a good goal would be to uh, agree on a proposal or two or maybe more um, and, and then work off of that. Uh, if, if you read the report that I sent out, um, I've asked for the sake of modeling, um, and the justification provided for that is that, um, of the four projects, including the Main Street proposal project, it is, sorry, I forgot I'm sharing and I'm scrolling up and down as I think and talk, I'm probably making you guys dizzy. Uh, of, of the four projects and of the uh, uh, Main Street Improvements project, um, there's really not anything that we've identified at this point that is going to take a, a significant uh, chunk out of the congestion problem. And, you know, in discussing Main Street Improvements with UDOT for context, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Monty or, or UDOT staff, but um, you know, there's nothing currently on the list for Main Street improvements that, that's really a game changer for congestion. Um, and then, you know, in the off Main Street parking, we still have that challenge of, of uh, quantifying a net increase of parking 
the South Recreational Parking Project and the multi-use pathway, you know, both have, uh, you know, there's some concerns that congestion is not, um, you know, the, the primary return for that project based on the investment. And so we're kind of in a circumstance where the legislative intent and UDOT's intent, uh, you know, is to address congestion and of the four projects in the box, you know, we, we as a, just a process of evolution, we don't have a project that, that really gets to the, uh, you know, makes a, signif a significant impact on congestion. And one of the, uh, you know, circumstances uh, is that the uh, parking on Main Street is something that, you know, is going to continue to be a, uh, a major contributor to congestion on Highway 191 and Main Street. And so if we're going to be looking at doing some analysis and modeling on Main Street improvements, I don't see how we, we can include that to, to get some good data to work off of. And, uh, and so I've, I've requested to have that included, you know, in any proposal that we do, to, to have that proposal include the removal of Main Street parking um, and then, and then uh, run a model or a projection with Main Street parking so we can kind of see both sides of that. Um, the other thing here, guys, is that uh, if we can um, find a way to, you know, to adequately address that congestion column for the program criteria, that does give us some more flexibility as a committee to move forward with other projects that, you know, that, that, uh, you know, that maybe are lacking somewhat in the congestion column. And so that's another, uh, you know, component of this to, to be mindful of. So, are there any questions on that? Concerns, kind of, on what I just shared before we before we jump into actually looking at uh, uh, developing a proposal or proposals for Main Street improvements? Yeah, Kurt, can we? Uh, um, I guess one thing would be I know that the removal of Main Street parking has been a contentious thing in the past, and so I would just like to see that if if that. Um, if we're going to be modeling that or studying that, that uh, I'd be interested in seeing um, uh, what might take some of that space. The thing about having parking there is that it actually creates a bit of a barrier between the sidewalk and the highway traffic. And so if we were going to give up that barrier, um, you know, what would replace that? And I think that that, that might be the opportunity uh, to build in some kind of drop-off sort of lanes where it's not parking, but if there were elderly or even just somebody that wanted to kind of unload a family and drop folks off curbside, that there might be some kind of option for some sort of pull-in. That might be something that could be utilized by a future uh, transit or shuttle system to have like these kind of uh, these pull in drop off sort of things. Maybe there's room for a bike lane in there as well so that, uh, you know, folks could cruise down Main Street without uh, being on the sidewalk or maybe the sidewalk is expanded. So um, uh, I, I hope that any kind of talk of uh, eliminating Main Street parking is kind of more framed with replacing Main Street parking. So it's like, okay, we're giving up Main Street parking in order to get X, Y, or Z. Yeah, those are, those are good comments. And just a, a quick response to that is you're absolutely right. And, and as far as uh, replacing with pr public transit infrastructure um, is consistent with kind of what we've established from the beginning and that we want to include public transit design into projects that you know that that we're going to move forward with uh, to the transportation commission so if if we do move forward with main street improvements and that is one of the one of the things that we do in the proposal then that would make sense to consider public transit the other thing too is um the off main street improvements is very connected to that also because you know, if, if that was something that the committee decided to support, you know, with local government and in 
you know, in uh, you know, and with the downtown business community. The, the idea is, is if that's something that's going to happen, but we build up the parking and the uh, 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 support system to the side and behind the downtown businesses, you know, that there's an added benefit there too. So it's definitely has connections to a lot of, you know, of, of other things. Um, going back to the, uh, can you all hear me all right? Okay, sorry, I got an unstable reminder on my connection. Going back to the, um, the document from UDOT, uh, the VET Moab hotspot ideas for Main Street, I want to just acknowledge that the mid-block crossings for pedestrians is a non-starter. So uh, it wouldn't make sense to include that in any proposal. Um, and I guess just keep in mind that if if we are, uh, and I, I mentioned this in the report, if, if, if we're all in agreement that there's there's uh, conflicting uses on Main Street, and the a predominant one, and 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 where the uh, the resources are coming from to address this issue is coming from State of Utah and Utah, and that is Highway 191 is running through the middle of our town, and so we do have to be mindful that if we're trying to slow Main Street down, or make it more pedestrian friendly in a manner that is going to you know, increase congestion and not allow for the efficient flow of traffic through Main Street, we've got a problem and we, we've got to address that disconnect. Um, are there are there any member, members of the committee that would like to uh, lead off with some proposals, I'm sorry, with some components, you know, for our first proposal of Main Street improvements? Uh, yeah, it looks like, uh, uh, Wes Shannon and then committee member Duncan. Go ahead, Wes. Uh, thanks, Curtis. You guys can hear me, yeah? Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yep, okay. yep. Just checking. Um, yeah, I just want to go back to what we were just talking about. Um, I mean, you guys know where I stand on the Main Street parking, you know, as a business owner and then representing the downtown Main Street Alliance. I mean, having the parking on Main Street is kind of our number one goal. Um, and this removal of Main Street parking has been going on for some years now. Um, and it seems like we always come back to it. Um, I know speaking for all the Main Street Alliance, the parking on Main Street is vital for safety and for the health of all the businesses. I mean, that's basically the bottom line. And you could probably go speak to any business owner on Main Street and that's what they're gonna say. Um, so with that in mind, I mean, I would just really like to hear from either Monty or one of the other UDOT guys. Um, Cause I think it's important to move forward and I guess my question is, is Main Street parking going to be taken away? Is it gonna be removed? And I think only then if we know that, it's, that's the only logical way to continue to move forward on any kind of projects that we're doing. As uh, Chairman said, like, it's gonna be important to uh, address all that coming up with a plan if Main Street parking is taken away. So before we, launch into that. I appreciate that, Wes. I think the idea at this point is to include the uh, removal of Main Street parking just in for modeling purposes of the Main Street improvements work um, and, and get some data. And, you know, and at that point when we have data to review, if the committee wants to explore supporting that in our proposal, at that point, we should get in and kind of hash that out because I don't want us to spend too much time, uh, you know, uh, litigating that or debating that on the front end because it's it's not on the table right now. It's just it's just to be considered for purposes of, of uh, acquiring data if that makes sense to everybody. But I do appreciate your comments and, and understand that's been a controversial subject. 
I don't want to cut you dot off from from responding, but I I do want to see us kind of get through the uh, exercise of developing proposals for this uh, uh, review. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I want to second what. Uh... Wes just said, uh, you weren't around, Curtis, it was our council, but uh, the merchants were vehemently opposed to taking away uh, on Main Street parking to the point where I, I can remember asking in council meetings, and, and there were other council members that did the same thing, asking for that promise that they would not do so in writing, to which they eventually re uh, agreed. Now, it, we're all very much aware that one of their priorities is increasing uh, decreasing congestion and pulling that park in is way, a way to do it but that's where it stood uh, so I think it's a very big hurdle so far as as West points out to to even contemplate it again and I am not in favor of continuing to study the problem uh, in my opinion 380 60 slots whatever it was we're not even remotely close to supplying that uh, amount of new parking and off stream uh, off, off Main Street situation. So uh, what I would like to do, all that's negative and I apologize for that. The positive part of it is, as I told you guys, Kaylin and I talked and Kaylin uh, chime in here if I haven't got this right and you can elaborate on what you'd like to do. But basically it comes down to uh, some combination of no left turn, uh, left turns at intersection uh, on Main Street through the downtown area in combination with um, uh, some com a, a bulb out pedestrian friendly thing. That's that's what we're searching for. Whether or not there's a satisfactory combination remains to be seen. But I would think if we're gonna do anything, we should be focusing on negotiating that combination of no left turns, uh, which is a lot, of, a lot of right turns off Main Street. That's the problem. Um, other, amenities for pedestrians that are more oriented and bulb outs and so on. And um, what else is I gonna, and off Main Street parking. That's where I'd like to see us focus when it comes to downtown stuff. And finally, I see that um, Monty is here and listening or he was a moment ago, where is he? Uh, there is. And I, I do wanna pose a question before this meeting is over with about North and South Rec operational expenses. So I'm done, thank you. Hey. Uh... Council Member Duncan, I think you've taken a lead on on uh, proposal number one. So if you wouldn't mind rephrasing, you've got the removal of left turns, right? Correct. And then and what were the other components that you'd like to see included in that? Uh, pedestrian friendly amenities, bulb outs, not mud block bulb outs, but bulb outs at the end of blocks. Uh, that's one thing. Kaylin can expand on this in more uh, more detail. And thirdly, an increase in off Main Street parking. We focus so far on mostly areas that are already in public ownership. And to my my impression is that there's a limited amount of parking that can realistically be accomplished that way, which is unfortunate. Carly, I know, has been working on, and the city have been working on trying to procure private parking lots behind buildings and so forth, and tells us that that's got its own set of problems. But it's those three things, off Main Street parking, bulb outs and amenities that are pedestrian friendly and some combination, not every intersection necessarily, but some intersections could be no left turn. Okay, so before we um, give other committee members to comment on that proposal, I wanna get, uh, clarify some things. So the off main parking is, it's its, it's, its own analysis is taking place outside of the main street improvements largely due to the fact that it's an unknown that we can increase parking um, with those off main street uh, improvements um, in addition to what's there now. Um, and so, you know, unless, so there's that. Um, the pedestrian friendly amenities, are you referring to anything off the list as far as uh, like bike routes or uh, center median or or expanded sidewalks. Like, can you clarify that for us, Mike? Yeah, uh, I don't know what happened to Kalen. He was here a moment ago. Uh, it's, it does include center amenities, 
and uh, it includes places where that center medium is going to be narrow for some length if it's an intersection that does permit a left turn. I was riding my bike down Main Street the other day just looking to see presently how long those left turn lanes are and they occupy a pretty fair fraction of the of the uh, total uh, length of a block. And particularly if there's just a few of them where you can actually make left turns, uh, you're gonna have to provide quite a lot of space in order to provide uh, enough storage, so to speak, for cars wishing to turn left. But yeah, Kaylin did uh, say center amenity, center main center median, sorry. Okay. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, but proposal number one so far, Mike, and Kaylin is the removal of left turns, bulb outs, uh, and the addition of a center median? Correct. 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 Some combination of all of the above. Again, this is critical. This doesn't mean that all left turns would necessarily be gone. Kaylin, mm -hmm. why don't you chime in and say what you see what you think? So I agree with all that. Um, it seems like if I'm not sure. I, I think removing left turns will have some element of controversy to it. So uh, we might want to use the modeling to figure out how much we need to do to get the uh, friction reduction um, in balance with uh, public outcry at the at change. Um, but if the removal of left turns uh, was consistent over a couple of blocks, it might be possible to then move the travel lanes closer to the middle to a um, uh, ele elevated median, which could create additional room for sidewalk. Um, so I think that would be a benefit to give the, the walking population um, and the bicycle okay. walking population more room to, to navigate. Um, but, but I think the modeling of that is critical as well as our public outreach. Okay. Um, I think in addition to, I'm in favor of mid-block bowl belts um, because I think that will add um, valuable pedestrian and bike parking space. Um, I did read and understand UDOT's concerns about those possibly contributing to um, a de facto mid-block crossing area. So my thought was that uh, should we want to pursue those that they would be offset so that you wouldn't get like the full distance bonus. If there was a center raised median that would be a barrier. And then there could also be an elevated concrete planter on the outside edge to further discourage people from attempting to cross there and create that sense of safety for the pedestrians. Um, more generally, I think um, so we're doing traffic modeling, but I think we should also keep the bigger picture of other aspects of this in mind. From the beginning, my perception is that, you know, we haven't had like developed shovel ready projects that we could just plug the hotspot money into that. And so, so we've kind of been scrambling all along to create projects that, that work. Um, and so I feel like it's important to keep even some higher level goals in mind, like safety has been mentioned. Um, and I agree that is a top priority for Main Street. I'm not sure that on street parking is really that safe for the drivers and driver side passengers getting out of the car onto a state highway. Um, there may be better ways to create safety for people on the insides of what is currently the parking. But I think that should be analyzed. Likewise, I think it's a goal for all of us to enhance economic activity downtown. And the assumption so far has been, or at least among some, that well, parking, par there has to be the current level of on-street parking to create that. And I would welcome input from the community and economic development staff on whether that is a reasonable assumption and we should continue with that or if there's maybe better ways to, to achieve that end. So really quickly, uh, before, before we uh, open the floor up to someone else, thank you for those comments, Kaylin, and adding additional clarification to proposal number one. But please also keep in mind, and I'd ask the committee to keep in mind that we don't have a clean sheet of goals with this money. The primary use for the money is to be uh, 
for congestion mitigation, and in particularly uh, in the highway one in it, highway 191 core through the community. And so that has to be the driving component to the projects that we do. Um, uh, and I want to repeat proposal number one and get Kaylin and Mike uh, to head nod for me before we kind of uh, continue to discuss it. So we've got the removal of left turns, mid block bulb outs, and uh, center median slash elevated median. Is there anything else in particular that you wanted added to that as a proposal? I would, um, one thing that was raised was having some con more consistency in downtown design. So I think in the process of this, that can be created. I realize that doesn't necessarily contribute to uh, congestion reduction, but I, I feel like we're kind of, since we've eliminated other aspects of congestion reduction, we're kind of relying on uh, left turn elimination to achieve that end in balance with other things, which are more geared around the economic development aspect of the hotspot funding. Okay, but in regards to proposal number one, what I'm asking of you is, is to help us with uh, identifying the scope of proposal number one for Main Street improvements. So as it was previously stated, is that correct as you and and Mike see it. I have the removal of left turns, mid block bulb outs, center median slash elevated median. Is there anything else that you would like to be included in proposal number one? Uh, just to be clear, uh, corner bulb outs. I mean, I think that that was a primary one that Mike articulated and then the, the mid block ones are, I'd like to see them, but I realize that uh, balancing the benefits with the pros and cons is a little more challenging there. Okay, we do have the opportunity to put forth multiple proposals. So I don't want everyone to feel like they've got to come in and, and you know, make amendments to this one too much. So is everybody comfortable with, with that being proposal number one before we move on to proposal number two? And so, Kurt, with the with the idea of proposals, um, these are things to to be studied. Correct? It's not like, hey, this is the answer. This is what we want. I guess with a, a variation on the idea of center medians, it's uh, something I've seen kind of in bigger cities, but maybe it's something that could be implemented here. It's almost like a frontage road. So maybe there was a north south separated through road and then if you wanted to stop in downtown you'd kind of merge onto this other lane that you would actually turn right from or whatever and then uh and then there could be parking almost as like a third lane you know a parking lane and so as you pulled out of parking you pulled into this mini frontage road and then you could work your way back into the through road so that the through road um, was divided by a median and maybe not center north south and I I don't know if in UDOT's mind if that's something that's like a no-go you know I've kind of seen it more with like six lane highways but maybe it could work with something like this and then uh, just reviewing the citizen comments that we got a little while ago there was the idea of roundabouts um, we see the farthest north stoplight by the bridge that backs up a lot of traffic. And um, that idea of the River Road 191 intersection, if there could be a, a large roundabout there, that might uh, cut down on congestion as well as um, Fifth West and something else on the South End. So I was curious from UDOT standpoint, is that worth like kind of throwing into a uh, a proposal for study or are those some of the kind of no-go things that immediately throw up red flags? Go ahead, Monty. Oh, I think you're muted, Monty. Double muted phone in 
the Zoom. Um, one of the real challenges, Evan, on the downtown area is space. We we currently have 11 foot lanes, including the center turn lane. And so our lanes would normally be 12 feet with a 14 foot center turn lane. And so having a frontage road and parking and median that there's there's no there's no room. Um, you know, I think if you if you look at those kind of our guidelines as we as we brainstormed on the on the UDOT side about you know how we viewed Main Street and some of the things that to, to help us kind of guide our discussion is we need all of the room available there for current for traffic levels. Um, any reduction in lanes would be a significant impact to capacity, and so yeah, unfortunately there's no there's no space. Um, uh, the idea of a roundabout on the north end, you know, that's, that's kind of intriguing. I don't know if the if the problem there um, would exist, given the fact that we're doing a widening project there right now. And so any any um, challenges with capacity and, and, and congestion in that area are probably going to be addressed pretty well with the project that's underway right now. Um, and Jared and, and Robert, if you had any thoughts regarding that, um, feel free to feel free to clarify your thoughts on that. There are limitations to capacity in a roundabout and with the volume of traffic that we have on 191, um, I think that would be the challenging factor with, with the roundabout. They, they do function well in terms of calming traffic, but the existing congestion issue primarily calms traffic. Um, you know, except in the off season, but that's that would be the the concern that that I think we would have with the roundabout at at, uh, at least at that north end and and the. But we can continue to investigate that a little bit. You know, we we did consider one in Springdale, but uh, again, with the congestion issues associated with Zion National Park being so close in Springdale, that one was was next also. Uh, so Robert, thank <clears throat> thank you. Uh, let me clarify just a bit. Uh, Eve Talman wrote uh, and talked about three uh, three roundabouts all together, and, and Evan has mentioned two of them. One at the bridge. Uh, she mentioned two others. Uh, first at Fifth West, all right, and then finally the third one south of town at our new uh, what's called Aggie Boulevard intersection. It was also known as Mill Creek uh, Drive, I guess it is. Um, so, Robert, what I heard you just tell us is that uh, roundabouts historically, and, and during my lifetime anyway, uh, have been installed where there were intersections that had stop signs on them, uh, particularly from side streets, and, and, and people have found that the roundabouts are great because they have fewer accidents and, as you say, calming. But I also heard you say that in, from a standpoint of putting them on the highway where throughput down up and down the highway is of paramount importance, that uh, <clears throat> they're not necessarily uh, what we would be looking for. Have I got that much right? Yes, uh, the there is a, a capacity issue related with the roundabouts. And so they ha obviously have limited capacity. Um, we're putting them in on our state highway in different, you know, in, in a few locations, but primarily the volumes are, are are smaller than what we have. My concern is during during the peak season in Moab. Um, I just I'm I'm very hesitant to go along with the roundabout because of the, you know, they they slow traffic down. They distribute traffic very well, you know, to the side streets. But in terms of of just traffic having to slow down to go around the roundabout, you know, um, which is one of the primary functions of, of 191. We want traffic flow. We also want to balance that, which we we have with pedestrian movement. And uh, so I don't I don't think we're. I, I mean, I wouldn't say that they can't be considered. Um, you know, on the south end. There may be some some options there at uh, at Mill Creek, uh, um, you know, possibly even Fourth East or something like that, on that south end. Um, there's also a, a a footprint that's pretty large 
to accommodate those roundabouts, especially in, in, in Moab, we would have to have two lane roundabouts, which would make it larger. And that may be, that would, my suspicions are we would have an issue at, at uh, 128 and 191 with, uh, with just the space that we have there. Okay, thank you. So with that, why don't we, uh, if we need to, um, you know, kind of split that off and have some additional analysis of, analysis of that, let's let's do that. But for right now, we won't attach those to proposal number one. Um, so we have one proposal. Remember, the goal is to leave the meeting with with one or some proposals that we can send to UDOT to analyze. And so far, council member Duncan and Jones have been kind enough to lead off with the first proposal. Is everyone okay with stamping that first proposal, moving on to proposal number two? Yeah, I mean, Curtis, I, I would just like to add um, that pedestrian crossings, the crosswalks themselves outside of where there's the lights. So I think it's um, right, at 200 um, on each, like having a safer crosswalk in the downtown area. I mean, there's quite a few places where, I mean, it goes for a really long time and there isn't crosswalks. And then there's some that um, people cannot, they don't have the visualization for, um, of people trying to cross the road. And I believe it's, I believe it's 200 is one of the, or 300 and and then also um, like at uh, Sweet Cravings, 400. I mean, there's spots that, I mean, people literally are praying, playing chicken. There are crosswalks, but you cannot, they're not visible um, for the vehicles or for people who are trying to stand crossing, so. Okay, so is that a specific request to include something in proposal number one, Karen, or is that another item? Um, I, it feels like it's a, it's a again, it's just a safety downtown. I would, I would potentially include it in number one, or I don't know what's number two looking like. Hmm. Well, it's a blank sheet right now, um, but hey, just Curtis. to clarify. Did you, can you clarify what it is specifically you're referring to? So, and it's been brought up at our council meetings before that, you know, potentially having a lighted crosswalk, you know, like you hit a button and it, you know, there's, there's a flashing light so that people can be visible. I mean, we have a lot of night, we've got gorgeous springs, summers and falls, and there's a lot of night um pedestrian traffic and and it's difficult to okay. see during the day so yeah so how about enhanced crosswalks and then yeah yeah okay uh kaylin and mike are you all right with that being included in proposal number one yeah i am and furthermore i'll add a pitch to uh, an audible signals uh, there's at least uh, one man who lives in my neighborhood who's complained about the absence he's blind Okay, so uh, it's, it's an amenity that you find in bigger cities. I don't know if we can afford it, but uh, but just a, a beeping audible signal for people who are hard of seeing would be great. Curtis, may I make a comment? Please. This isn't necessarily adding anything to proposal number one, but I, I did want to mention that when I got Curtis's email last week, with the chairman's analysis, whatever it was called. I thought it was a, a very bold move, but I wholly support it. Um, sitting in on the first round of the discussions for hot spot funding, there is a, there's a link that I sent to all of you that um, is a good starting place for Main Street improvements. It has a cross section of the proposal at that time that UDOT came up with or the engineering firms, I don't recall who came up with it, but uh, I, I, I believe that if we can replace and, well, I'll just make it short. I think it is definitely beneficial to have um, in the analysis, the analyses we do to have 
taking parking off of Main Street as part of it, if only for a comparison. But I also believe that um, if we can create enough off street, off Main Street parking to replace and exceed what, what we would lose, I don't believe businesses would suffer. Um, there are tons of examples where people can't park downtown in other cities and they walk to where they want to go. It's also an economic opportunity for someone to have a shuttle that takes people to where they want to go. This is a walking community. If we took parking off of Main Street, I wouldn't replace it with, um, with lanes, first of all, because of the room issue. But um, in that cross section, it had a bike lane which just yesterday I was driving down Main Street and there was a bike that thought they could go between the parked cars and the lanes of traffic and it's an incredibly unsafe situation. So I just wanted to say, that's a long way to say I support putting uh, as a comparison to these projects, uh, taking parking off of Main Street. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's about as a committee and as local governments making informed decisions that are that are in part data driven and not just clamor. And I think if we are doing, UDOT is lending us resources to analyze some amendments to how Main Street functions. We would be, uh, I, I would be disappointed to not take the opportunity to acquire that data so that we can review the information and, and then make good decisions based off that. Um, and I say that as a, a, a downtown business owner, um, you know, and, and someone that is mindful of those things. And so, you know, what I, what I would like to see us do is I would like to see us, if we say we have two or three proposals, I would like to see UDOT help us in understanding those proposals with and without, off, with and without Main Street parking. You know, it's just a way to understand those proposals with those two uh, different lenses. And I, you know, I, I, I just got to say, I, I strongly encourage that and understand that there's some history there. Uh, but it's, it's all about context too. And a, and a lot of main street business owners, in my opinion, um, you know, are, are opposed to that in sequence with other things and not necessarily, you know, a package of projects that we can deliver with this opportunity. So, I appreciate that, Jaylen, and I want to uh, move us on to proposal number two. Um, hey, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Curtis. I want to throw up very quickly. I just, while people have been talking, I've been thinking about where we might put in left turns if we're going to take out some left turns. So chew on this, kids. For southbound traffic, the obvious ones to me are just two, one at 100 north and one at 300 south. For Northbound traffic, the obvious two are at 100 south and 400 north. So write that down and think about right. where you might actually want left turns and where you don't. You know, if if I could, I think that that brings up a good point that um, really, uh, to me, project one and project two are kind of inseparably linked. And I think that if we're going to talk about uh, possibility removing parking and removing left turns, that it's really going to need like a whole flow study. And like to Mike's point of like, well, if we're not going to be able to turn left wherever, where should we turn left? And if suddenly we're like flushing all the left turns into this one block, how is that going to affect the flow off of Main Street? And I think that this idea of like um, separating Main Street, that Main Street somehow exists in a vacuum um, isn't gonna do us any favors. And I would like, you know, that this proposal would, would uh, also request a, a flow study for whatever's left. Um, I kind of threw out this idea of like that Emma Boulevard parking, you know, like if we couldn't turn that into a, a through street, maybe that's a parking and how do we flow through there? Um, so it's, it's not just like, how do we get them off main street, but then where do they go once they're off main street and how do they access, you know, this off main street parking that we're looking at, um, creating. So 
to me, in my mind, project one and project two are, are really inseparably linked. Um, I think we already highlighted that, that project two isn't necessarily that strong as a standalone thing. If we're just talking about uh, off Main Street improvements and you know, prettying things up and adding a few other dozen parking, like that alone doesn't necessarily uh, address the, the goals of the UDOT project. Um, but if we couple that with eliminating left turns, maybe all of them, maybe half of them, you know, in order to figure out how much to eliminate, it really needs to, to kind of be coupled with this uh, understanding of the other streets and designing that. Can I just ask a pragmatic question? When we are talking about doing this modeling, who who is doing the modeling? You know. And they're open to that. Open to doing the studies or showing us like yeah, examples that's, or. That's actually how this uh, agenda item is, has been defined and why we're working through it this way is for Main Street improvements, it was communicated to me that we need to identify some proposals that include items from that original scope of work of Main Street improvements. We deliver those proposals to UDOT and then they model those. And then, and then we have an opportunity to review those and understand what the data says. So that's why we're working through it this way because this is how we're going to, this is the opportunity that we have to analyze it. And that's how it'll work. And if I can just keep rambling, I'm sorry to monopolize it, but I think that a lot of the, the comments that we've seen from citizens are kind of focused on this off Main Street stuff. And, um, uh, and I like this kind of idea of like the whole package sort of thing. So I guess to the committee or to you, Dot, is there a reason at this point not to convince combine proposal one and proposal two into this broader kind of downtown main street uh study i agree combine one and two are we talking when we say two we mean off main street parking uh yeah, yeah. I, th I think at one point it was called downtown improvements it yeah. might be um but I think, I think the goal is to hopefully address more than just parking, but the, the general flow of traffic. Yeah, those are, I'll, in a minute, we're gonna give Zach Ryan an opportunity to weigh in, but those are good points, uh, Evan. And the first uh, uh, issue was we needed to clarify the, the off Main Street parking and the improvements of the off Main Streets, like the urban design, we needed to kind of clarify that um, because we, we kind of keep winding up back in this space where it's like we need to lead with congestion mitigation. The focus has to be congestion mitigation. Um, and, and then those other criteria, which is economic development and recreation and tourism impact and infrastructure, you know, are in association with it. But I think you raised some some good points, not only in the potential to combine those, but also in your point about a flow study and the connection with off main streets, because you're right, if we're analyzing main street improvements in a bubble, and then we're, we're uh, analyzing the potential to add parking to the off main street without recognizing what potential redesign of main street flow and the impacts on the off main street parking as we, you know, we run into trouble there. So. Definitely took good notes of that. Zach Rye, go ahead. Sure. Uh, I I would just uh, offer my support for uh, viewing all of these individual components as part of a downtown business or downtown improvements package. I don't see them as being um, separated at all. Uh, I think you have to view them in tandem. And uh, Evan earlier in the call uh, used the phrase trade-offs or the term trade-offs. And uh, I think it's really important for this committee to be thinking through that lens of trade-offs uh, with respect to the, the goals of the funding. 
Um, there are clearly trade-offs between congestion mitigation and, um, you know, parking, for instance. Um, and uh, so I, I would say I, I also support uh, incorporating some analysis of eliminating Main Street parking in each of these scenarios through the lens of trade-offs. Um, and, and then I would also say, you know, the flip side of that is to make sure that Wes communicates the underlying interests of the businesses downtown. So the position is, you know, we have to maintain parking on Main Street, but the underlying interests are, well, we need our customers to have a place that's accessible to our business so that they can come patronize it. But those aren't necessarily one in the same. And you, I think it's really important for the, the business community to, to try to uh, elucidate what those underlying interests are uh, before, you know, you know, ultimately sticking on a position. And, and it may not change. I'm not suggesting that it will, uh, but it may. And, and there may be some trade-offs where the end goal is, is you know, a mutual gain uh, for all of the, the different interests. Um, and then to expand that, I would say, you know, in the context of thinking about this as downtown improvements uh, and, and really highlighting both congestion mitigation and economic development uh, and whose interests we're trying to optimize is that, um, you know, Main Street business owners are not the only downtown stakeholders. So, you know, it's important to think about the economic opportunity off Main Street as well. So when I think about eliminating right turns and UDOT statement that says, you know, maybe that's going to push some congestion or, or some activity to the off Main Street, you know, areas of downtown. Well, you know, we're already seeing an expansion of the footprint of our downtown business activity and you know, moving some activity off of Main Street could be helpful for the entire downtown core. Um, but, but also just thinking that like, you know, Main Street's not the only stakeholder in this for, for economic development. Um, and, then, and then lastly, I would say, um, you know, this is separate from, th th this is a, a separate kind of statement uh, from what I just wrapped up in, in terms of viewing this all as downtown improvements is um, just more specifically with respect to eliminating left turns and maybe uh, isolating them to a few areas. In the first iteration of this uh, conversation a couple of years ago, looking at, uh, and I think it was a, another part of the hotspot funding, but it was looking specifically at the bypass and what our options were for there. Kaylin uh, conceptualized this idea of splitting traffic on Main Street and like 100 West or 100 East based on direction of flow. So that you'd have like northbound traffic on one street and southbound traffic on another. And there may be some overlap between that concept and what Mike is saying uh, with like, you know, the, the left turn locations that he identified. Um, and so I haven't like fully fleshed out any ideas, but I, I think that Jeff and Monty and, and Robert might be able to, to sort of mix those two ideas and see if they fit together, just as a, a little bit of exploration there. If in terms of modeling uh, the elimination or consolidation of, of left turns. So um, I know that was a lot, but I kind of just saving this up until it made sense to share it with the group. Yeah, I appreciate that, Zachariah. That's really helpful. And um, again, another, uh, you know, supportive statement and combining the Main Street improvement scope with the off main parking to just be one singular downtown improvements uh, scope of work, which I, I think is getting some traction. And as of right now, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, so uh, if you don't have some additional comments to, to what Zachariah offered or responses, uh, happy to 
to turn it over to you before we kind of continue, um, you know, with our note taking exercise is kind of what this is turning into, but I think it leaves us with the ingredients to, to put forward some proposals, you know, and, and begin the analysis. Do you, do you guys have any additional comments, Monty, on, on what Zachary um, will offer for the committee? Well, I, I agree with Zachary 100% about trade-offs. Uh, we have a very finite space and we have many stakeholders and I appreciated Zachary's comments about stakeholders. It's not just downtown business, it's, it's um, stakeholders throughout the community and the traveling public <clears throat> that we have to be mindful of. Um, part of, the, part of the, the desire to kind of get proposals out there is, is, the, is to kind of bracket what we can model, um, you know, I and I've offered that we can take a VISM model and and analyze it um, as far as the proposals for, you know, what does eliminating left turns do for us? What does eliminating parking do for us? What you know, all of those various type of uh, factors and don't really want to just have everything be open. Let's go model it and go model it because <clears throat> if it's not if it's not uh, acceptable to the committee, um, I don't, quite frankly, I don't want to burn a bunch of time and resources modeling items that aren't acceptable. Um, <clears throat> UDOT, we have proposals that you've seen and that Jay, Jalen referred us back to. Uh, so, you know, that if asked what UDOT would do left to our own devices, we would probably do something like that to improve capacity. So really, the question is, what is acceptable to this committee to define? And we'll move forward and model that to determine if it is reveals a project that meets the criteria and we can live with. And I'll be I'll be happy about. Okay. Um, so with that being said, uh, are there any additional components to uh, Main Street improvements? that that we want to have on the table before we conclude today's work. Did uh did the look at the the widening of the sidewalk on the west side did that get included or is that kind of paired with the elimination of um parking? I guess the in the in UDOT's response to that, Evan, I mean, it can be included because it, you know, it, it's just a component of a proposal, but initially it was rated as, um, you know, more pedestrian friendly as the only pro, but the list of cons is that it would reduce the width for parking. And so it definitely has some overlap with, with what happens with parking on Main Street, but it does increase friction congestion um, and it reduces, uh, uh, pavement width and usable area for traffic. And so as a standalone component, it rates very poor in terms of how it affects congestion. But I mean, as a committee member, if you feel strongly about it, that you would like it to be included in a proposal, I mean, um, at the end well, of I day, guess it's the, one ingredient. I guess to kind of Jay Lynn's point where, you know, there, there's other places where walking a couple blocks to get to where you're trying to go isn't that unusual. But if the, uh, you know, if the pedestrian experience is, uh, uh, you know, the, it's not just like a pleasantry, but if it's difficult to walk two blocks, then you're going to circle around three times trying to find a place to park. And we've all seen those, or, you know, I bet everyone on this call avoids downtown at certain times because it's impossible to walk shoulder to shoulder down the sidewalk and get to where you're trying to get when there's crowds standing in front waiting for a dinner reservation and all that. Why don't we, uh, why don't we do this um, just really quickly to address Monty's concern. Karen, are you still with us at all? I think she's getting a root like now. Karen's gone, but yeah. What I was wanting to do was take I'm a. I'm here. I'm here. Can I'm, we take I, a straw poll vote of who is in favor of including the removal of, of Main Street parking in the analysis of proposals so we can get a clear understanding of, of where the committee's at and being open to collecting that data? 
I think that'd be really helpful for this work so we can kind of know where we sit there. So I'm just gonna ask for a, 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 a yes or a hand raise if you're in favor of including that, that trade-off lens for Main Street parking in these proposals. Everybody that's in support of that, raise your hand, please. Or say yes. 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 Okay, I got Jay Land, Karen and Mike uh, and Wes, you, you're opposed to including that analysis? Wes, uh, I, yes. I'm not opposed. Um, if it, like, again, like Zachary said, if it's a give and take. So, okay. So just based off that, I know Wes was opposed. We do have a, a, a straw a, a straw poll vote to support including that in the analysis from the committee. So that's confirmed. Um, we have, you know, for the sake of time and just making sure that we're continuing to progress, like we have a, I've got a lot of really good notes. I'm sure Carly does also, and we've got good minutes of, of all the proposals. We kind of, we started with proposal number one and then kind of added onto that and, and, and this has kind of evolved, but I think based off of what we've heard today, we can uh, take this and convert it into, uh, into a structure that we can analyze, you know, and then the committee can, can receive that information and we can work off of that. Um, does anybody have anything else to add before we conclude the meeting? Yes. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I certainly do conclude the meeting. I thought we were headed on to uh, proposals three and four, and I'm at the tail end on it as far as South Rec parking. So if I may, uh, may I pose uh, a question which is a little bit out of left field to Monty and, and the rest of the UDOT guys in terms of funding and what they've done? Okay, go ahead. Mike. Yeah, I'm okay, so, so Monty, here's the deal. Uh, so far as North and South Rec, uh, parking for oversized vehicle is concerned. Uh, I think uh, I would agree uh, that without any kind of uh, shuttle system, any kind of public transport from those areas into the downtown area, they're not worth a lot. Uh, the city and the county are like broke right now, not that the state's in much better shape. Um, but uh, given that we may have some uh, leftover funds, I hope, uh, would so my question is real simple would you dot consider funding the operational expenses of a very small prototype uh, shuttle system from either the north and or the south uh, the south would probably be preferable but i would take either or both uh, funding those operational expenses i'm talking about maybe two small vans uh, running uh, out of sync with each other to provide service as often as possible. Uh, Evan pointed out and Karen did too that uh, the school district here has a bus, a bus barn and uh, that bus barn might be useful for us to rent so to speak that would be part of the oper operational expenses as well. So the idea is that in two years time we'd have some two years worth of operation to show to demonstrate I hope we can make it jazzy, uh, some sort of ve interesting vehicles to ride in, uh, do the right thing for the town, uh, reduce downtown congestion, all right, because now we don't have people with uh, long rigs hunting around for a park place to park, and it keeps those vehicles out of downtown. So I think it's a great thing. And after two years, the onus then would be on the city and or the county to provide all further recreational uh, operational funding but would you consider it if we have the money available to us in the present hotspot funds that is my question so i thank you for that uh but the purpose of this discussion is the scope of main street improvements and so i really want to avoid getting off track based on on what we've established with the public we're going to discuss um and we've established that uh, public transit uh, can be accounted for in the design of, of any project that we do. And so I, I don't want to be uh, uh, too authoritative here, but I really don't want to go down a public transit rabbit hole when that's not the purpose of this business that we're conducting here today. Um, 
Monty, I will give you the opportunity to respond to that. Um, uh, you know, just to um, hopefully segue a, a more in-depth conversation on that at another juncture. In order to just address it quickly, is we don't we don't fund the, the O and M. Um, that's, that's something that we've made a decision not to do, and uh, throughout UDOT, or throughout the state, actually. Um, so right now, I don't believe that option is is very much on the table. We would fund perhaps the infrastructure, or the building location, up and over within the system, but not the way we currently addressing that within the department. All right, uh, Mike, you did you did mention uh, proposal number two, and so. You know, essentially, we came, we we had proposal number one introduced, and then we just piled a ton of material on top of that um, that potentially changes the way that we evaluate these. And so, if if there is a committee member that would like to make a propo another proposal in conjunction with number two, happy to entertain that. But if we if we don't have that, we have enough. Uh, and our notes today to to come back at, at the next meeting and kind of work through this. Do we do we have, does anyone would anyone like to make a pitch for another proposal of Main Street or downtown improvements? Kurt, I would just uh, I don't know if this fits best with there or with uh, uh, one of the other potential proposed project proposals, but. Um, after Jay Lynn re forwarded the preliminary project ideas from way back then, that story map, um, there's a conceptual project for shared use paths there. And that includes uh, connections to can Canyon Pathways, the Mill Creek Pathways. And um, if we're looking at a whole kind of downtown sort of uh, scoping, and flow studies and stuff, I think that those shared use, use paths could be included there as well, besides just uh, you know prioritizing cars as our um, main downtown vehicle. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, and, and you know, obviously if there were safe routes for kids to get to school and stuff, that's going to eliminate a lot of uh, vehicle traffic on 191 for most days. Okay. Any other any other comments um, before we conclude the meeting? I think it, uh, Carly, Zachariah, Monty, and Stab. I think it would be good to uh, work to get a kind of a follow up call, Zoom meeting scheduled to kind of compare notes and and then chart a path forward. Um, we've got a lot of, this was very productive, a lot of good information. I really appreciate everybody's engagement and contributions to this and hopefully understand the balance of, of trying to manage time and efficiency with um, an opportunity to make a big uh, dent in the congestion in downtown Moab, so. Curtis, uh, did you talk about the, the field trip? Oh, I didn't, um, but thank you for that. We do have the field trip scheduled. We will have a quorum this Friday at 8 a.m. Um, and we will have an agenda and kind of a, uh, a little tour guide out soon. Um, and the focus of this field trip is the kind of off main parking potential and redesign potential. Again, that's this Friday at 8 a.m. We're gonna meet in front of City Hall um, and we're going to have uh, Chuck Williams and Zachariah and Carly with us and an opportunity to understand the pros, cons, opportunities, challenges of redesigning the off main streets um, to increase parking. And so hopefully everyone can make it to that and we'll get a, a good first cut of, of information so we can better understand the potential there. 8 a.m. Friday in front of City Hall, have your coffees, be ready to go. Could I, uh, two questions on that real quick? Um, we had yep. a, a informal sort of thing. Wes, I forget his name, the, the member of the Downtown Alliance that uh, we kind of did a downtown walkthrough. I was curious if, uh, if anyone was opposed to uh, having him attend this meeting as well. 
And if not, I would, uh, I don't have his contact. Wes, maybe you could get an invite out to him. And uh, uh, the second thing was, is there, is this just Moab folks or is there any of the UDOT team that's gonna be able to make it for the, uh, the tour? My understanding is it's, it's just Moab folks. Um, and also wanted to offer to you that I am more than open to, you know, anyone that can join us as a resource to help us, you know, understand the circumstance. And so I, I would welcome, I would welcome any committee members, uh, you know, or any staff, I mean, you know, to, to help us contribute um, to getting good information on that. Uh, Marty, right. UDOT is not a, a planning to attend the field trip Friday morning, is that correct? Um, I was not. I actually wasn't aware of it. Um, didn't, didn't have it on my calendar. And so I'd have to look and even see what availability is. Okay. Sorry about that. I, I think probably the assumption, just because their their uh, previous statements that that uh, uh, this is engineering and, and resources for city streets, that we would need to utilize local resources is probably probably why you didn't get included in that, but we would, we would welcome you, of course, at any point, so. Understood, Understood. yes, I, I appreciate it. Okay, we'll work on that. Okay, any other comments before we wrap this up? Um, I just, I'm unclear at this point if, um, so, sort of like downtown, like there's still sort of the parking that is at the, in the Emma Boulevard area and the parking that is behind Zion's um, sort of hanging out there. And I'm wondering if I need to bring those up as part of downtown improvements or if those are still in the mix as backups, if there's extra money or, I'm a little unclear on the, like what the scope of downtown is and what the overall process is. Can you clarify that? Yeah, I mean, the, the short answer is, is the scope is what we approved uh, in the four projects that are included in the box. As far as, um, you know, dispersed parking, we focused on the off main streets for dispersed parking. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, feel free Carly or UDOT to correct me if I'm wrong, but as of this point, Emma Boulevard, um, and the, the parking structure uh, are not included in the analysis of the committee. So. That's my understanding too, but I think it is up to the committee. Um, okay. Um, Kaylin, would you like to make a recommendation in that regard? I would recommend that um, the sort of assemblage of parking areas behind Zion's as a general, between Zion's and the post office could, could still benefit from um, government help. It's a bunch of um, sort of, uh, just to clean it up, it could be made more efficient. The maintenance could get clarified. Um, right now the mate, who's responsible for maintenance of what is perceived of as a public route is um, my understanding the city ends up patching it up, but it's actually a bunch of private property. Um, so I think that would benefit from some government attention and funding and then contribute to the overall parking solution. Okay. So essentially this is uh, a centralized dispersed parking. That's what we're saying. And, and do we feel like this would this would add to the projects that are in the box, or this is an expansion of a, of an existing scope of work? Um. I was going to say that might be a good thing for the field trip to just kind of look at those. And while we're looking at streets and where we might fit more parking on streets, 
it might be worth swinging through some of those and just seeing what we're talking about. And, and maybe that could be, uh, oh, to Kalen's point, a little clarity on, on who owns what back there and who's doing the maintenance on what. And if we kind of had an idea of that going in, that might be beneficial. And maybe uh, potentially a second field trip, you know, that focuses just on those opportunities too. Yeah, and Chris have actually been doing some of that um, as part of the initial round of funding to get dispersed parking in several locations. Um, for example, um, by like behind the garage near the parlor and those um, those kinds of areas, as well as other spots in town. We can certainly look into those again. They're extremely complicated as as we said. You have one property owner that it makes it quite especially the owners who are um the government who we just can't require. Sharon, you need to mute. Yeah, oh. is it Right. Sorry, I don't mean to shout, but um, certainly we can do a roundup of the issues we've had with negotiating with property owners um, and maybe give a presentation. Um, we can also do it when it came to the Emma Boulevard kind of uh, issues. It, it turns out it's it's an endeavor, but we might as well talk about it if, if that's something you have in mind for the overall downtown improvements. Yeah. I'd, I'd appreciate that. Just, it seems like um, a number of possibilities were eliminated. And so just bringing this committee up to speed. And since it's potentially narrowed down, that might make the decision process easier. And then along, along the way, yeah. maybe um, uh, you, all, you staff people and Mr. Chairman, when you're talking to UDOT, talk about how that might um, that Emma might relate to the traffic flow studies and um, congestion reduction. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm old, and I I'm trying to uh, honor the request from UDOT to identify four projects by the end of April. Stick to those. Get the job done. And so I I, I guess just. We'll discuss it and, and understanding where we draw that line between those projects and and expanding that, which I think there should be some flexibility, especially if projects have the potential to, uh, you know, address the, the issue of congestion. So that is definitely noted. Thank you for bringing that up, Council Member Jones. Um, any other comments before we adjourn? Okay, thank you all for uh, participating today and we'll look forward to seeing uh, those of you that are available Friday at 8 a.m. for the field trip and, um, and then rolling into our next meeting, which is uh, scheduled to uh, continue to discuss the Main Street improvements and which may now be the downtown improvements. We'll sort that out. What about scheduling for that? Do we need to, um, what do we have on the books so far for that meeting? We have a date picked out, Carly? Um, <clears throat> off the top of my head, I think we were doing it just two weeks out, the 10th, right? I think so, yeah. If that's I still so. Okay. Um, but although, Sorry, are we doing Main Street, Main Street improvements or the parking design might take a little bit longer. So, although I think we have plenty and it depends on what UDOT has, what kind of uh, needs they have when it comes to developing models and updating it, but. Yeah, we'll figure that out. Um, yeah. we, we'll figure that out. Okay, so right now we're planning for the 10th of next month at 2 p.m. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you.